Hi, my friends. I hope you guys are staying happy and healthy. Today, we are going to read a book called Astro the Stellar Sea Lion. So, I hope you guys are ready. So, before we get to reading, I want you guys to pay close attention to how the illustrations in this story better help you understand the story, okay? Astro the Stellar Sea Lion by Jean Walker Harvey. Astro is not an ordinary sea lion. He's a stellar sea lion. He lost his mother when he was only a few days old. No one knows what happened to her. Luckily, a scientist spotted Astro, hungry and all alone on an island off the California coast. The young pup was brought to the Marine Mammal Center, a place that cares for sick, hurt, and stranded marine animals. Astro only weighed 39 pounds. His new friends mixed up special smoothie made from ground herring, salmon oil, and, wh and whipping cream. Astro happily gulped it down as volunteers bottle fed him. When he gained weight, his friends attached the bottle to a fence of his to the fence of his pen so he could feed himself. By the time he was ten months old, Astro was big enough to join the other stellar sea lions in the wild where he belonged. A satellite tag was attached to Astro's back so the Marine Mammal Center would be able to track his travels in the ocean. His friends took him to the beach where he had been found and set him free in the surf. Astro paddled into the foam. Then, a wave hit him. He didn't know what to do. He was scared and scooted out of the seawater onto the sand. Astro needed to go into the ocean, not up on the beach with people. Would Astro be able to return to the wild? Was he so young when he was rescued that he attached to people instead of other sea lions? From far down the beach, Astro's friends watched him. For the next two days, Astro barely went into the water. Instead, he joined the elephant seals on the beach. He was confused and had not seen the ocean since he was a few days old. The volunteers were worried he would starve. When Astro didn't leave the beach, his friends decided to take him far out into the ocean, far away from the beaches and people, so they took Astro back to the center. So from this illustration, I can tell that Astro looks very out of place and kind of confused, which helps me better understand what I just read. The next day, Astro was put on a boat with eight northern fur seals to be released into the ocean. The nine marine mammals and their friends from the center traveled to the Furlong Islands, 27 miles west of the Golden Gate Bridge. As the cages were open, as the cages were open for the eight seals, they each quickly dove into the ocean. Everyone on the boat cheered. When someone opened Astro's cage, Astro didn't move. His friends waited. Astro still didn't move. Go join your pals, urged the boat captain. Astro didn't budge. His friends tilted the cage. He held on with all four flippers. Finally, he let go. With a huge splash, Astro swam deep into the ocean. His friends cheered. I can tell from this illustration how reluctant Astro is to get out of his cage. You can visualize how much he really doesn't want to go into the ocean. But 10 days later, Astro swam under the Golden Gate Bridge into the San Francisco Bay. He climbed onto a, a sandy beach in someone's backyard, not far from the Marine Mammal Center. Once again, the people from the center captured Astro and drove him back to his pen. He seemed happy to be back, but his friends were worried. The longer Astro stayed out of the ocean, the harder it would be for him to live in the wild. This illustration helps me see what a satellite tag is. I remember early in the text, they said they attached one to Astro's back so they could track him in the ocean. And now, because of this illustration, I can see exactly what that looks like. After a few days, Astro's friends took him to another island. They hoped he would not return to any beaches with people. But Astro had other plans. Just three days later, he swam under the Golden Gate Bridge and into the San Francisco Bay. Just like a dog, he had found his way back. 
This time, he spotted a group of children and their parents on a field next to a school. The people were holding a walkathon to raise money for the school. Astro flopped out of the water and onto the field. He wanted to join the fun. He scooted around the orange cones on the grassy field. He made it all the way around one lap. Everyone cheered for Astro. But the people also knew Astro needed to return to the ocean. They tried to coax him towards the bay by pretending their buckets were full of food and then swinging the buckets in front of him. Astro didn't leave. He just stayed in the parking lot. The people called the Marine Mammal Center. Once again, the volunteers rescued Astro and returned him to the pen and saltwater tank. His friends in the Marine Mammal Center were, were sad, very sad. They realized that Astro could not live in the ocean. He had been too young when he was rescued and had attached himself to people instead of stellar sea lions. He would just keep returning to the places with people. He could not stay at the Marine Mammal Center any longer because it is an animal hospital, not a place to live. Astro's friends made phone calls to find him a new home. His friends at the center were thrilled when the Mystic Aquarium in Connecticut said Astro could go there. Astro's first stop was a six-month stay at a long marine lab at the University of California in Santa Cruz. Since stellar sea lions are a threatened species, the scientists at the lab studied Astro to learn how to help protect them. They tested Astro's hearing and looked at how quickly he processed his food. Astro needed to learn to follow directions. The trainers used a training method called bridge and target. When Astro learned to touch the trainer's fist, the, the target, with his nose, the trainer would say, good, the bridge. Astro connected the good with the right behavior. Then the trainer could teach him to follow other directions. <clears throat> wanting, the, wanting to please the trainers, Astro quickly learned. Astro was known for his fun personality and liked to greet school children who visited the Long Marine Lab. He loved to play with his toys and took them into his kennel when he slept. This illustration helps me visualize how they trained Astro. Astro flew in an airplane all the way across the United States from California to Connecticut. Although his friends at the Marine Mammal Center and the Long Marine Laboratory wish that Astro could have returned to the ocean, they're very happy that he has such a wonderful new home. If you're ever in Mystic, Connecticut, be sure to visit him. Astro looks so happy and alert in this illustration. I can see that he's finally home. So remember, our goal this week is to use the illustrations to better understand what we read. These pictures and illustrations really help me understand Astro's journey, and they help me understand the story. Hope they did the same for you.